Well, welcome to session eight of the Equip Discipleship Training material. You're almost there. There's only one more session after this where we put it all together. And I'm real excited to talk about this session because the title of this session is Empowered to Go. I love talking about how you and I are empowered to go. Let's recap real quick though. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 and 19 really gives us the commissioning and the calling to go. And in this passage, it's Jesus' own words that he is speaking to us about why and where we're supposed to go. So Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20, it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. Now, that's enough right there. Jesus tells us to go. Remember, we talked about this before. Our job is not to go do discipleship. It's to go make disciples. It's to go into all the world and make disciples. We understand that discipleship is teaching people to observe everything Jesus commanded us to do. But the last sentence is key. The last sentence. I am with you always to the ends of the age. I love that sentence because that sentence, not only in that verse, not only says that we are called to go, but how comforting is it to know that Jesus is going with us? Jesus is going with us. In fact, over in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he says it this way. He says, you will receive power. And there's that word power. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Again, why did we receive power? Well, we received power to take his message to the ends of the earth. We received his power to go and to make disciples. And it is through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we cannot forget because again, part of the reason why people don't try to make disciples is one, they don't know how. And honestly, they don't feel qualified. They don't feel that they can. They don't feel that they should. They don't feel good enough or strong enough or have all the answers. And that's okay. That's why we walk through the equipped training. But at some point, you got to realize and really believe that the Holy Spirit power, the same power that was in the very beginning of creation, the same power that literally rose Jesus from the dead, the same power that brings all the gifts and the workings of God into your life, that power is with you all the way to the end. That Holy Spirit has given you power to do and accomplish not just teaching discipleship, but being an actual disciple. You are empowered to go. Don't let the enemy tell you that you're weaker than. Don't let the enemy tell you that you can't because Jesus said that you can. See, there's growth environments of how we grow well. Let me give you four growth environments of how we can continue to grow and receive power. The first one is grace plus truth plus time equals growth. Understanding and allowing God's grace to happen in our life Knowing that his word is true, having time to develop will actually grow us. The other growth environment is with God's word itself. This Bible we keep referring to, these 66 books of the Bible, they are equipped and empowered to speak God's word and truth. It's word, his prayer, his power. The third growth environment is that we grow with one another. This is fellowship. This is koinonia. This is the time that you and I as believers spend together, sharpening each other, encouraging each other, stirring up the gifts in one another. That is key and critical growth environment. And the fourth growth environment is out being a witness. We will grow and you will grow in your faith as you go out and be a witness to your community, to your job, to your school, and to your neighbors. As you and I are empowered to go, we will meet people in this journey at different stages. So here we go, there's six stages real quickly. Stage one, it's pre-evangelism. It's cultivating the interest of others. This is where five-step outreach that we talked about before comes into play, that by listening to people, spending time with people, praying for them, serving them, this is cultivating the soil for the word of God to be planted. That's stage one. Stage two is evangelism. This is where you and I, that we are sharing our faith in order for people to come to know Jesus. We're sharing our story at this point. We're inviting people into a relationship with Jesus. Stage three is the fundamental stage. This is the foundations of our faith. 
This is where new believers have to be learned. They have to be taught. They got to go through just understanding the basic principles of what the Bible is, what the good news actually is. This is where theology and doctrine really matter. This is where somebody like you journeying with somebody, this is where we start picking people up in the discipleship pathway. Stage four is becoming a disciple. This is discipleship. This is where we are walking side by side with people. This is where we're helping people understand. This is where people are learning. This is where your programs and your classes and your sermons and small groups and YouTube videos, all the resources come into play because we are helping people become a disciple. They're understanding discipleship, becoming more like Jesus. The fifth stage is making disciples. This is where we are spiritually producing other disciples. So we've moved people from just learning about discipleship to understanding their calling and their ownership and responsibility to make other disciples. And then the final stage of a discipleship is leaders of leaders. This is where you and I, that we are, sure, we're in discipleship and we might be developing disciples, but we're spending time developing mature believers into people who will make other disciples. We are leaders of leaders who are implementing all this together. So in session eight, we have one more session to go, which is session nine, which is being mobilized to actually go. But we're gonna talk practically of how you put this into practice, how you make the invite and the ask. But let me just encourage you in session eight one more time. You are called. You and I are called to do this. Jesus said, go into the world and make disciples. That is a calling. That is the commission that you have signed up for, just like I have by being a follower of Jesus. Secondly, you are equipped. We just spent eight sessions, hopefully equipping you around not only discipleship, but the behaviors of the discipleship. And listen, I love this statement. God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. So maybe you're thinking you can't, you're not qualified enough. Sometimes that's an okay place to be because it allows God to actually qualify you because he's called you. So listen, if God called you to it, he's gonna give you the tools to get you through it. I love that. He's called you, he's qualified you, he's equipped you. And finally, as we just talked about, you have the Holy Spirit. You don't have a B version of the Holy Spirit. You don't have a junior version of the Holy Spirit. You have the part of the Trinity Holy Spirit living and active inside of you that will give you power as you go make disciples. Thanks for joining us in session eight. I cannot wait to have you join us in our final session nine as we talk about how we are mobilized to actually go and do this.